Hey folks, this is Grease Scotsman. This video will provide a quick start guide and overview of Miro SDK features and tools. If you have not yet installed the Miro SDK, please refer to the Miro SDK installation tutorial. On first launch, and until you create your own working palette, a getting started window will appear providing a broad overview of the steps needed to create a palette, add a level crate that uses the default Miro SDK template, and pack the content for use in BoneLab. If you ever need to refer to the getting started info again, it can be reopened from the stress level zero menu. If BoneLab is installed to a typical location on your hard drive, the SDK will automatically detect its installation path. If not, then you can use the folder button in step one of the getting started guide to launch the game install locator tool. This tool has an advanced feature that will let you browse to the location manually, or optionally, you can choose to perform an extensive search of your hard drives. Keep in mind that this search can take several minutes and is meant as a last resort option. An internal set of searchable documentation has been added to the Miro SDK that details all major functions and topics and contains quick access to video tutorials and the online Miro SDK wiki. This documentation also has a handy checklist system with progress that persists even after you close the editor and is meant to guide you through the level making process and ensure that you don't miss a crucial step like placing light probes or making a nap mesh. Mero content is organized into palettes, which are containers for their content that can be packed and distributed. Palettes hold crates, which serve as physical game content like spawnables, levels, or avatars. Data cards are digital content, like monodiscs, that hold the game's soundtrack, or bone tabs that can be used to organize and describe physical crate content, but also provide references to the player and drives the game's activator permissions system. The first step to any Mero project is to create a working palette. Use the Asset Warehouse button in this Getting Started window, or the Always Present Asset Warehouse button in the upper left of the Unity window to open the Asset Warehouse. Next, use the Create Palette button and fill out the Title and Author fields, keeping in mind that once these values are set, they cannot be easily changed. If your game install location has been confirmed, then you will see a set of external palettes in addition to your working palette get added to the asset warehouse. These external palettes give you access to all vanilla Bone Lab content as a dependency and can be used within your own projects without having to include the actual files. To create a basic level that has all of the minimum requirements and features, select your working palette in the asset warehouse. Next, click the Create Level Crate button in the Palettes Inspector. Enter a title for the level. Using the default Mero Scene option, we'll create a basic level using a template that has all of the bare bones components of a viable Bone Lab level. However, if you already have a custom Unity scene that the level crate should use, you can optionally select Custom Scene from the drop down and set the custom scene field. There are several tools that will help with level creation. The Asset Warehouse Spawner Overlay allows you to drag and drop any spawnable into the scene with its crate spawner component configured. You can display the overlay by clicking anywhere in the scene to ensure it has focus and press spacebar. As an alternative, if you need the same functionality but prefer using a dockable window, the Asset Warehouse Spawner window is also available. One of the most crucial elements to Bone Lab levels are zones. Zones have activation permissions that can use bone tag data cards or filter by crates of any type or any mix of the two in between. Zones with zone events trigger actions when activated and zones with zone links provide internal tracking of the player and other entities across different areas of the level. Zones with zone links also perform crucial performance and efficiency tasks and handle how music and ambient sounds are played in transition. All of these tools will be covered in greater depth and used in demonstrations throughout the remaining zone-related video tutorials. The zone creation and linking overlay includes a set of tools to help create, edit, and link zones together. To toggle the overlay, you can press the spacebar in the scene view and select the zone creation and linking overlay from the list. A much deeper dive into zones, zone links, and zone events are covered in their respective video tutorials. The main functions of the zone creation and linking overlay will be covered there in detail. Finally, the zone creation and linking overlay tool also includes a helper utility for automating some of the steps involved in using an advanced feature, scene chunks. All of these tools will be covered in greater depth and used in demonstrations throughout the remaining zone-related video tutorials. With this getting started overview complete, 
The Zone Basics and Permissions video is recommended and begins the Mero SDK level authoring tutorial series. See you in the void.